We're going to do some experimental ultra long range stuff today. It's going to be fun. It's a little bit sloppy, but hey man, that's reality. We shooting this reel out. You know what I'm saying? So what we got here today is the old Steyr SSG 08 A1. We've been fielding this for a while. I need to get out of here and get a little more action. Uh, today is a perfect day for doing some ultra long range stuff, way beyond the max effect range of this cartridge. Normally, we're going to run some proprietary ammo here, which will get us way pack, way past that distance. Okay, uh, it's, this is set up for 1,100 meters. This actually is stable enough; it'll go as far as I want it to go. In order to do that, I'm going to need an extra amount of adjustment. I'm going to change out optics here real quick. Um, this is a great scope. We've been running this on this rifle. This is a beast. This is the IOR uh, 3 to 18, or is this a 3.5? Which one is this? Yeah, 3.5 to 18 power, the classic old 35mm uh, main tube. However, I do got this one set up in case we need a little more elevation because I plan on getting western today. So you got the PM2 up here. Uh, we're just going to swap out scope mounts real quick. And what I got here is I've got my fix it sticks this is nice because it comes with all the adapters and for consistency's sake you have it little individual ratcheting mechanisms for your inch pounds okay like a torque wrenches okay now this is nice because each one of these is consistent on the dial systems they're not quite as consistent as this kind of a deal and you can get in whatever custom rating you want for for poundage so i think oh man my eyeballs off Oh, there we go. All right. So we have all kinds of different dealios. I'm just going to unscrew this deal. Nice thing about both of these mounts is they're pretty repeatable. So I can swap these scopes. I've already played with it a bit and have everything zeroed. And um, they're pretty repeatable. This is American Rifle Company M10QDL is what we have on here. And that's uh, what they use a lot. They kind of the clamshell mounts. They lock on top it's a pretty cool deal uh, this deal oh boy is our pm2 with the spur mount okay now this one i have set up just to kind of clip on there and we got uh, everything ready to rock and roll for the terac unit okay all right i'm gonna grab this deal here this mounts onto a rail this is the stain egg specifications okay in case anyone's wondering we're just gonna clip her on here like so and we just barely have enough room to get her on here perfect perfectly configured for that deal and we can use this big ugly sucker here which I love So this is proprietary equipment, guys, for proprietary applications. I'm gonna grab my ammunition. I got my dope. I got my cowboy boots. And I got my brains today, which is a good thing. Now I could actually hold 10 rounds in there. Might actually take 10 rounds to hit at the distances we plan in to shoot today. The distance is going to be very close to the year number of the model of this vehicle we're driving. Which is farther than usual for this little guy. Now you see that magazine layer, guys? Got a lot of room in there, don't we? Got a lot of room in there. If you want to have special ultra-long bullets. Some guys who are reloading, they use a super long bullets. This is actually proprietary ammunition. It's not super long. This fits in standard, like uh, AR-10 style mags. So we don't need this today for this ammo. But if you ever did want to load out to really, really long lengths, overall length of the cartridge, that would help. We'll just go at that many. And if we can't hit within that many shots, then it's not a real world situation anyways. So we'll just stop, right? All right, guys, here we are. Rex here, we're out in the bush. We got the uh, Steyr SSG-08 A1, as you guys know, and we're set up to shoot way out there past that hill. That uh, knob right there is about 911. We're shooting at the hills to the left of that and well beyond that uh, series of hills out there. So, what we're gonna do here, a little experimentation, 
see how far we can go with the 762. This is fun. And if you don't know, we're running this. That's a Trom, what they call the 1100 meter. We're going well beyond that. But we're going to try it anyways. Uh, I got my dope set up ready. We just figured it out. We're, we're going to have to need a little bit of help on the elevation. The Schmidt and Bender PM2 has about 21 ish mils of adjustment. Our dope is going to be 55.8 for today's conditions. So what I'm going to need, actually, we got our little sig here. By the way, guys, your danger space at this kind of distance is incredibly important. Danger space is how much slop you can get away with in uh, your range estimation before your firing solution will make you miss your target. If you're trying to hit the vitals on a large mammal at this distance, your danger space is like two to three meters. That means if you're off by two or three meters in your range determination, after you've done all your other stuff, we'll show you that at the LR class, um, you're going to miss, and it's going to suck. Um, so with a 40-inch tall target, what we're shooting at, um, you're going to have a little bit more wiggle room, about eight meters of danger space at that distance. The bull coming down at such a steep angle, the taller target you have, a little more forgiving you have, but we're still pretty tight. So you have to make darn sure exactly what your distance to the target is. Um, this is the TACCOM HQ Charlie Terak. This one is set up for 20 mils. And I'm just going to get that thing set up here. Oh, there she goes. Nice locked in a place. It's got really good magnets. It actually stays in place. We do have screws to tighten it on there if we need to. Uh, if you have a heavy recoiling rifle, especially that thing might fly off the front when you shoot from recoil. Um, and it's an expensive unit, but it's pretty stout. You can pick it back up and put it back on and it'll still actually be, pre be re pretty repeatable. Um, but if you have a real stoutly recoiling unit, you can put them screws on. This tire has like no recoil, so I'm not worried about that. So I'm just gonna magnetically attach that on there. <laughs> My scope currently is indexed at zero mils. I got 20 right now that I put that prism on there, okay? So right here, if you can see, this prism just gave me 20 mils without even touching my dials, okay? Now, I could use a reticle, but at this distance, I'm going to need more magnification than 5 power. With the PM2, I can see the whole reticle, but at this actual long-range stuff, I'm going to crank her up, and I don't do this very much, guys. I'm going to crank it up to 20, just so I can get some good aiming points. I can see it. I'm not disturbing the rifle. Um, I did have this uh, Accuracy Solutions uh, TAC-3 on the front of the weapon here, which is going to help me stabilize the rifle a lot on the rear end. If I'm not using that, um, any amount of playback here is going to really throw it off, okay? And it's going to be tricky. Today's conditions are perfect. It's actually kind of a sleet, rainy, snowy. I'm laying in slush right now, which is okay, because I'm not going to complain about that. <laughs> People are teaching teaching me to filter my language, so I'm I'm being a better a better dude every day. Okay, um, but we're going to shoot pretty far, so uh, we need 55.8 mils, not minutes of angle. 55.8 mils of elevation. I got 20. Oh, wrong way. We saw that other stuff. That's 10 mils, that makes 30, right? 10 plus uh, 20 up here. Got 20 up here plus 10, 30. Now I'm gonna go into my second revolution. My window's lit up. I am now, hold on, I'm gonna come back here. There we go, hold on. I wanna make sure I didn't miss it, okay. I got lost when I'm visiting. I wanna make darn sure before I start hammering rounds that I'm not gonna be wasting ammo. So there's him, and we got 20 right there. Okay, so we got 20. Now I need five more. So I'm going to be one, two, three, four, five, and eight more clicks. Oh, I ran out, so I'm going to back up to five. So I'm indexed now. 
and with the Charlie Terak installed, I got 55 mils of drop. But I can't quite still reach it with the 20 mils. Now this steel can be adjusted to give you a lot more than 20 mils. You can custom configure this as long as you need to. But uh, I got 20 mils here. I got her maxed out here. And I'm going to have to add, so I'm going to have to hold over. And it doesn't look like my wind conditions have changed. If I had a headwind or a tailwind at this distance, it's going to really, really throw a guy off a lot. Uh, this, I'm going to recheck my stuff here to make sure I'm not crazy. Always triple verify what you're doing. So I'm at 55.8. I'm confirming it. I'm just triple checking everything, guys. Uh, windage for a 10 mile an hour crosswind would be 8.5 mils. Gosh darn it. I'm going to turn back the magnification just a tiny bit so I have some kind of hope of being able to see my max ordinate after recoil. My time of flight is going to be over five seconds. Um, well over five seconds. All right, let me just make sure I got everything right. I'm going to kind of be very, very steady on the wind. I got like a slight, tiny amount of a crosswind from left to right overall. Let me double check my Mirage again. All right, let me get her nestled in where I was before. Okay. Okay. Now the deal here is if I touch this rifle too much, it's gonna be all whacked out. Okay. Where did it go? There it is. Just gonna triple check to make sure I'm looking at the right deal out there. Believe it or not, this thing works pretty good here. Okay. Ready? So I'm holding over from the center of the reticle. And just, oh man, I mean there's a, oh man, you know you guys are lucky, you forgot. Oh, hold on, wrong way, here we go. Right there. I always like to dial in my my spin in Coriolis for ultra long range stuff. The five second flight time, or six or seven se second flight time, depending on your conditions, you can actually have a little bit of drift from Coriolis in. Spin drift will be, definitely you have to dial that in. Okay, now I got that in. You can pay attention to the wind. The snow has almost fallen straight down. Not quite, so I'm gonna just Aim into the wind a little bit. Okay, I'm going to do a parallax check here. I'm just moving my head just a little bit to see that I'm perfect. No, uh, it's basically at infinity. Uh, as good as I'm going to get, so I have to be very careful to be perfectly behind the optic. Grass is confusing me here. You got uh, the Steyr factory trigger. Okay. Are we clear back there? Ready to roll. I need to, every amount of input on this rifle is changing it. I can't hardly touch it.
very close. Okay, I got it. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Yeah, you like to hit it. The first time, you know, that's cool, but you can't always get her. There's always environmental accumulation and slop in there. First one was just, uh, it was a little bit low. So I think there's a little bit of a headwind component that I misestimated maybe through that valley or something. The second shot was right off the edge and then the shirt third shot was a winner okay now the steel is actually still attached cool man now at that distance there's not a lot of power <laughs> we're shooting a 7.62 to at 308 so it's like getting shot with a very very light duty pistol if you're gonna take out a, a real target if i was shooting I mean, this is beyond the distance to where even a T-1000 will probably light up if you don't hit it exactly right. Where's my third brass? I shot three, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I can look for that later. Um, I like it. Not bad. And I mean, like, like I say again, this spur two, we're not done with testing and evaluation on this thing. Uh, but it's pretty darn repeatable, man. Like, you can take it on and put it off, you know, uh, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off kind of deal, and it pretty much stays right in there within, like, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a mil in terms of point of impact shift. But it's, it's actually pretty easy for me to stay on target when I got a long axis here when my bipod legs way out there. I got them folded forward a little bit. It gives me a little bit longer, and it lets me get a little lower, which is a little more stable. And uh, if you get your ergonomics corrected, we're good. All right, I won't bore you any further. thought you guys would dig that, so. You really thought you'd get away with it, big guy? Alpha 9 or Tango 1 3, this is Pirate Treasure K. Indexing is the solution for 7.2. What in the hell are you holding? Ah, it's not here. It's an MP49, it's a saw. Target's got good cover. It's a dangerous space for a headshot at TRP 5. It's me and my pals. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, man. You're shorter than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> These are super.